Welcome to Hands-On Science with us here at Dinosaurs and Dragonflies. My name is Anna and we're here to learn about God's amazing creation through fun, hands-on science activities. Today we're going to be learning about our atmosphere and what it's made of. First of all, air is not just empty space. Air is made of molecules. Molecules are combinations of atoms that are stuck together. The air we breathe in is full of these tiny molecules. Molecules have lots of energy and are constantly bouncing off of things. We're going to use ping pong balls and a blow dryer to visualize the motion of air molecules. So we're going to pretend these ping pong balls are air molecules. Just like everything else that has matter, air has weight. So we're going to test to see if we can weigh air. Of course, we won't be able to do it on a bathroom scale, but there is another way to weigh air. We're going to make a balance scale. Gather your materials together, and then you can start by blowing up the first balloon. Once you have your balloon filled up, the way we're going to tie it off is we're actually just going to twist it, twist it a bunch of times, and then we're going to kind of fold it over so that we have that twisted part sticking out right there, fold it over, and we're going to take our small binder clip and clip it right on that little loop there, and that should hold. So do that for all the balloons. In order for this experiment to work, the balloon has to be blown up all the way. The air inside the balloon has to be more dense, heavier than the air outside of the balloon. So this isn't going to cut it. Now for a 9 inch balloon, the circumference, the distance around the outside of the balloon, should be about 28 inches. So we're going to measure that with a tape measure. If you don't have a um, tape measure like this, you can just use a piece of string and measure that on a ruler. So we can see that's about 28 inches, so that's right about where we want it. So if it has a little too much air, you can let out a little bit of air. If it doesn't have enough air, you can um, add more air. Next we're going to make a hook to hold the balloons. So you're going to take a large paper clip, we're going to bend the two ends apart, just like that. And then open the top one up a little, so it'll look like that. And then we're going to um, hook the balloons on there right on the end. So that's what we're going to do once we have our stand set up. To build a stand, you're going to need a yardstick and three binder clips, large binder clips for this. And you're going to clip the yardstick with the binder clips on the ends, right on the ends there, and on the other side. And then you're going to clip it right in the middle, right on the 18 inch mark that, trying to get it centered there. And then on the ends, we're going to pull the metal handle things down, so those are going to be where the hook will be to hold the balloons on. We're going to do that on both sides. We are going to use a pencil as the balance point for the scale. I had an extra stand I taped it to, but you can just tape it to the edge of a table or set a stack of books on it. Just make sure the pencil sticks out a few inches from the table. Then you can hang your balance scale on the pencil with the binder clip. Next, take your paper clip hook and hang half of your balloons on it with the small binder clips. Hang the hook on one side of the scale, and then do the same thing on the other side. You will need to make sure the scale is balanced at this point. If it leans to one side, you can adjust the scale by moving the center clip.
Once the scale is balanced, you can release the air from the balloons on one side. To do this, unclip the neck of the balloon and clip it again on the lip of the balloon so the air can escape. The scale will move a bit as the balloons empty, but once it stops, the side of the scale with the empty balloon should be slightly higher than the other. The balloons without air weigh less than the balloons with air. If you don't get this experiment to work the first time, don't worry, it took me several times too. You can try filling the balloons a bit more or using a few more balloons. contains many different types of molecules, the most abundant of which are nitrogen and oxygen. 78% of the air we breathe is made of nitrogen. Nitrogen is very important for life and can be found in every cell in our bodies and in our DNA. Everything from plants to people need nitrogen. However, we can't use it in the form it's found in the atmosphere. It takes special bacteria to convert the nitrogen into the forms we need for our bodies. However, these bacteria die if they're exposed to oxygen. Thankfully, there are special nodules in the roots of plants that protect these bacteria from oxygen so they can convert the nitrogen. The plants need the special forms of nitrogen that these bacteria produce, and the bacteria need the plants for their special oxygen-free nodule home. They must both be there at the same time for the nitrogen cycle to work. Our atmosphere contains 21% oxygen and less than 1% carbon dioxide. People, animals, and even plants need oxygen to live. We breathe in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. Plants also need oxygen for cellular respiration, how cells produce their energy, but they give off more oxygen overall than they use. 70% of all the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from phytoplankton, tiny plants that live in the ocean. We can't see any of these molecules in the air, but we can see what they do. One property of air molecules that we can demonstrate is air resistance. Have you ever tried running through a pool of waist-deep water? As you try to push through the water, the water resists your body, holding you back. Air does the same thing. When a feather falls to the ground, it hits a lot of air molecules on the way down, slowing its fall. A feather has a lot of surface area compared to its weight, so it has a lot of air resistance. A rock, on the other hand, has less surface area compared to its weight, so it has less air resistance. Rocks fall a lot faster than feathers. Now you might think, well, maybe that's just because the rock is heavier. So we're going to test that by dropping two objects with the same weight, but with different surface areas. What was that? It's a dinosaur! I must have hit him with the rock! He doesn't look angry. I hope he's okay. Can you understand me? Well, I'm sorry I hit you with the rock. I didn't know you were back there. What's your name? Dynamo? Well, nice to meet you, Dynamo. I'm Anna. I was just telling the kids watching that we're going to do an experiment about ear resistance. Would you like to watch? Okay then. So we're going to take two sheets of paper that are the same weight and drop them. Paper has a lot of surface area compared to its weight, so it has a lot of air resistance. But if we take one of these sheets and crumple it up, it has the same weight, but a lot less surface area. So, let's see if this falls faster when we drop it. As we thought, the crumbled up paper did fall faster. Yes, Dynamo? What would happen if 
happen if we did this experiment without any air? Well, without air, there'd be no air resistance. So both these papers would hit the ground at the same time. In fact, everything would fall at the same rate without air, whether it were light or heavy. If you were in a place without air and you dropped a feather and a bowling ball, they would both hit the ground at the same time. Oh, Dynamo wants to know what the air is like on other planets. Well, let's check out a couple. Jupiter is a beautiful planet, but it isn't somewhere where you want to go on vacation. Jupiter's atmosphere is full of giant hurricanes and powerful lightning storms. The Great Red Spot is Jupiter's largest storm and is bigger than our entire planet. People have wanted to visit Mars for quite some time now, and NASA hopes to send people there in 25 years. But if you ever visit Mars, you will definitely want to bring a spacesuit. Mars's atmosphere is so thin it would turn you into a mummy. Venus, on the other hand, does have a thick atmosphere. A little too thick, actually. Venus's dense atmosphere has a crushing pressure over 90 times the air pressure here on Earth. Venus's atmosphere also has an extreme greenhouse effect, producing temperatures high enough to melt lead. The atmosphere is made of carbon dioxide and rain sulfuric acid, a deadly poison. Unlike every other planet, the Earth's atmosphere is perfectly suited for life. In addition to having just the right ingredients, our atmosphere also gives us the water cycle that supplies us with fresh water, regulates temperature through the greenhouse effect, blocks harmful UV radiation, and so much more. I'm so glad God created our atmosphere with just what we would need to live. Aren't you, Dynamo? Just imagine if we had an atmosphere with as much air pressure as Venus. We'd get crushed. Now there's some interesting things we can learn about air pressure, so we're going to talk about that next. Bye, Mr. Dynamo! Another important property of air molecules is air pressure. Air molecules bouncing against objects and other molecules creates air pressure. The pressure at sea level is 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's like a bowling ball sitting on top of every square inch of your body. Thankfully, we have pressure inside our bodies that pushes out, so we don't even notice the pressure. You can feel the force of air pressure by trying to blow up a balloon in a bottle. Take a large juice or soda bottle and stick the balloon into the opening and wrap the, the neck of the balloon around the mouth of the bottle. Now try blowing the balloon up. I can't blow up a balloon in the first place, so my brother's going to show you how it works. Wrapping the balloon over the top of the bottle traps the air inside. When you try to blow up the balloon, it squishes those air molecules together into less space. The more you squish those air molecules, the higher their air pressure will be, and the more those molecules will push back on the balloon. Your breath just doesn't have enough force to squish those molecules together enough to blow up the balloon. The Bible talks about an important event that will take place in our atmosphere. Jesus said he will come back one day in the clouds and take his people to live with him forever. As a just and holy God, he will then judge and pour out his wrath on all the sin and evil in the world. The problem is that we have sin in us when we disobey God that has to be judged too. But Jesus took our sin and put it on himself when he died on the cross. He took our judgment for us. So we have a choice. We can either take God's judgment ourselves or we can let Jesus take our place. If we accept Jesus' payment for our sins, we will get to go home to heaven to live with him forever when he comes back. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thanks for joining us for Hands-On Science. Next video, we're going to be talking about air pressure, how hot air balloons fly, and how pressure affects the weather. Click subscribe so you don't miss it.